Hey, I'm Matthew from Living Tesla. I've seen some debate around solar panel cleaning and whether or not it's actually worth it. Now, of course, it's worth it from an energy output perspective, but what about financially? Does the increase in output actually make up for the cost of cleaning the panels? Of course, every scenario is going to be different, so this is just one example of how it worked out for me. And brace yourselves, this is gonna take several steps. We have to figure out what the change in output is and how that translates to energy, and then what that becomes in dollars. And it's gonna take some math. So I've had my Tesla solar and power wall system for about a year now, and I felt like they were probably due for a cleaning. In our back patio, we have a glass top table and it has been getting pretty filthy, especially from some of the recent fires that we've had that rained down ash. So I figure whatever's on that table is probably representative of what's on the panels. Since getting on the roof is towards the top of my top 10 list of things I don't like to do around the house, I hired a local company to do it. They charged $8 a panel and I have 12 panels, so that was $96. They had a pretty good setup. They used a carbon and RODI filter and a brush that sprayed the water out of the head of the brush. So the idea is that they sprayed the water on the panels, they brushed the grime away, and then they used that purified water to rinse the panels off, and it should not leave any water spots behind. From what I've read, that's a pretty good way to do it. One thing that could have been better was their timing. Ideally, you would want to do that kind of cleaning early in the morning before the sun heats up the panels too much but they weren't able to get to my job until about 10.30. That did give us a really good step change though, so that we could see the output before and after and use that to do some math here. So here's a graph of my solar output throughout the cleaning. At 10.37, I was generating 1,459 watts. Then things get jumpy while they're cleaning them until 10.53 when my output stabilized at 1,851 watts. So if you're doing the math there, that's a 392 watt increase, or nearly 27% in just 16 minutes. Now some of that increase is just from the sun moving, so to estimate that, I'll back up 16 minutes before they started cleaning, where it was 1366 watts, and I'll take that difference of 93 watts away from the 1851 watts. So that gives us a net increase of 20.5% for just the cleaning alone. So that's definitely a worthwhile change in power output, but what about financially? To get there, we need to figure out what this change in watts in power translates into an energy in kilowatt hours, and then figure out how much we're paying or we're getting paid per kilowatt hour to translate that into dollars. The easiest place for me to get energy data is from the Tesla app. So here's yesterday. It looks like a pretty smooth graph, so likely a pretty good output day with minimal clouds, and that made for a total of 15 and a half kilowatt hours with those dirty panels. But had they been cleaner and made 20% more energy, that would have been 18.6 kilowatt hours total for the day for an increase of 3.1 kilowatt hours. So that's what we missed out on generating yesterday. So what's a kilowatt hour worth? For me, it depends on the rate plan, the season, summer or winter, whether we're weekday or weekend, and the time of day that is generated. That can be anywhere from 55 cents a kilowatt hour all the way down to 13 cents a kilowatt hour. So let's just pick a day and go through it. So this is how the power wall is set up to work when it's set to advanced time-based control. So here's a day that clearly shows where all that's happening with solar and the power wall. Here's where the yellow solar is going directly into the green battery, so we're storing the energy when rates are lower so it can be used later when the rates are higher. Here's where the battery is fully charged and solar, minus what the house is using, is going back out to the grid in white. We're getting paid for that solar at the partial peak rate. Then here's where peak time starts. The power wall takes over running the house entirely so that all of the solar can go back out to the grid to earn the maximum amount of money at the highest rate. So right now we're in the summer rates with peak at 55 cents a kilowatt hour and partial peak at 30 cents a kilowatt hour. If I look back at the app of that 15.5 kilowatt hours of total solar throughout the day, we used 6.3 kilowatt hours during peak from the power wall and generated an additional 2.6 kilowatt hours that went back out onto the grid. So that means 8.9 kilowatt hours of solar was at peak rates and the remaining 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours we generated was at partial peak. 
So we add that up at peak, 8.9 kilowatt hours times 55 cents per kilowatt hour equals $4.90. Then at partial peak, it was 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours times 30 cents a kilowatt hour equals $1.98. For a total of $6.88 for the total value of the solar that was generated yesterday. Still with me? We're almost there. So if we assume yesterday would have been 20% higher with the panel cleaning, that would be $8.26 for a difference of $1.38 a day. So if the panel cleaning costs $96 and it will earn an additional $1.38 a day, it will pay for itself in 70 days. So around two months of days like yesterday. Now was yesterday an average day? Not really. We had clear skies. We're still in summer peak rates. We're heading into winter. Days are going to get shorter. Those panels are going to get dirtier. But even if we consider half or even a third of yesterday being an average day, that's still six months of justification for that panel cleaning. And that's pretty good. Of course, you could do the cleaning yourself and save some money. But the guys who cleaned my roof were using several hundred dollars worth of nice equipment, and I'm happy to pay them to maintain and store all of it. And then when you consider the risks of getting up on a wet roof, I'd call it money well spent. So that's one experience, but what's that mean for you? Really, the two biggest factors are how dirty are the panels and what is the cost of the electricity that you're missing out on generating. For some people, that may mean they can justify a panel cleaning every six months. For others, it may be two years or more. And for some people, you may just want to keep those panels clean so that you know you're generating the maximum amount of clean energy back out onto the grid, regardless of the cost. So even though everyone's situation's different, I hope this can at least guide where you need to look to judge for yourself. And if you're on the California Central Coast, Crystal Clean A1 window cleaning, totally recommended. They did a good job for me, and I'm sure they will for you. So that's it. Leave us your questions in the comments. Thanks for watching.